Kevin comic Aidan Green overcame a stammer to become a sell-out comedian. Let's take a look at him in action. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Woo! Uh, so my name is Aidan. <clears throat> so my yep. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Aidan. Uh, my name is Aidan. Um, I know some of you are thinking, does he have a speech impediment or is he just from Cavan? Um, <laughs> and it's both. Uh, I have a stammer and I am my own first cousin. Um, <laughs> 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 he said it. That was that. <laughs> Aiden Green, welcome to the show. So Thanks the rumours are true. <laughs> yeah. Don't start this border county stuff now, Monaghan versus we Cavan. We've, we've got that out of the way before we got <laughs> on here. You can't be dealing with that. Your your comedy, you put it out there front and centre that oh, yeah. you have a stammer. So you know, tell us about that. How, how it all began. Well, I can't avoid it being front and centre because I stammer constantly. So. So I just, I think from the time I started to stand up, uh, 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 since, since I started to stand up, I just stammered immediately. So it's kind of like, well, I have to make a joke, you know. For, yeah. um, um, so, so it's a kind of a fun thing where if I stammer in the show, I'll be able to make a joke out of the yeah. thing I just stammered on. Mm. Uh, and what was it like growing up with that? Because for other kids out there, I'm sure, like, kids be, can be quite mean, certainly at young ages. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they were. <laughs> they were horrible, but, oh, I, right. but it, was, um, it was a thing where I think because I had an older brother and I was pretty good at football, nobody ever really bullied me. They said a lot of things behind my back. But they would never say them to my face because my older brother was an absolute unit. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. Yeah. That. That's always yeah. good to have. So this kind of, you know, so growing up with it, you were, were you comfortable with it? Oh no, I was the, I was miserable. My entire childhood, I was miserable because of it. I wouldn't leave the house. You know, like I was very shy. And my, and, and, and my parents were very concerned, you know, like that they sent me to all kinds of speech therapies, yeah. anything they could find for it, the cure for the stammer, I got it all. Okay. But it wasn't until I was in my 20s and I kind of thought, oh, nobody cares about my stammer except for me. Like that was a big thing. I was kind of, you know, saying I'm the one who's putting all of this meaning on to mm. go, go, go. And it was actually for a previous show, what I did was I called up a lot of people who had said horrible things about me in the past. And I got them to say them again for the show and I played them throughout the show. What? But the thing was, I called all these people and none of them remembered saying any of these things. So for me, that was kind of, you know, like a light bulb thing where it's kind of like, oh, they said these things and never thought about them again, but I had been thinking about them for years. I'd internalized all these horrible things. So nobody cares that, that I stammer, except mm -hmm. for me. So I was the one allowing it to control my life. I, never has a truer word been spoken, but we catastrophize in yeah. our own head. Yeah, make it a huge not, thing. Uh, incredible, mm. absolutely. And, uh, but then you decided to take it into comedy, which seems to be that, like you said, you used to just hide away in your bedroom yeah. and now you're up on stage. In front of people. Yeah, because I think it's such a silly thing, stammering. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's so weird as a disability. It isn't a physical disability. It's not a visible disability. People don't understand it. So it's very easy for me to play with people's conceptions of stammerings and make jokes out of it. Because mm -hmm. I have found from doing stand-up that people do not understand what stammering is at all. Well, why? What, what, what is it? Well, it, I mean, it's just like a disability where I can't talk very, very well, but people, there's all these like misconceptions around it. Like people mm. genuinely think I'm not very, very smart when they see me stammer. All these kind of, oh, that, that was one of the main things what? somebody oh, said really? about me in the past. Oh yeah, so there was a story in the show where I got pretty good marks in my junior cert and I showed them to a guy on the bus. And if you saw how shocked this guy was that I got like three A's in my junior cert, which isn't even that impressive. <laughs> I know. But he was like, three A, huge. Fair play to you. And that's the thing. You mentioned there the cures yes. or the things that, you know, the speech therapy, but not only that, like there are, you know, there's, there's old wives tales or superstitions. The Catholic cure. Yes. The King's speech cure, what are those? Well, the King's speech cure uh, is just, speech therapy in general, which is helpful for some people. But there is kind of uh, a problem with this idea of, you know, like, oh, he cured his speech in the King's speech, which he did not. It's just a lot of people will naturally grow out of their stammers and stuff. So a lot of things which people think are cures, I think, 
people will naturally grow out of them and people want a story to go with it. So I got the Catholic cure for stammering when I was uh, 15, no, sorry, 13, I think, I think, where I was brought into this old woman's, um, uh, who I'd never met before, and she like sat me down and she pulled back my head. She started saying, you know, like all these prayers over my throat. Uh, but I have quite a long uh, head <laughs> and she had short wee arms. So what she actually had to do was lift both her boobs up and place them ah, on my head. On. Which when you're 12 years old <laughs> is the first intimacy you've ever had with a woman. <laughs> Uh, I think I arguably <laughs> stammered more after that. I'm I was saying, like, so it kind of helped. Yeah. I mean, maybe that would be the cure. That I mean, <laughs> I suppose you get you get great content from exactly. a lot of this stuff. Exactly. That's my favorite thing because the amount of weird situations my stammer has got me into. Because yeah. the amount of times in my life where somebody's asking me for something and I think, oh, I can't say the answer. I'll say something else that's similar. But that will send me into a completely. Day. I'll be yes. getting on the bus back to. Calvin, and I'm like, oh, I can't say Calvin today, so I'll say in a skillin instead. And then suddenly I'll be stuck in a bus because I'll be trying to get off the bus in Calvin, and the bus driver will be like, oh, no, no, my mate, this isn't the stop for in a skillin, stay on the bus. <laughs> I'm stuck in a skillin with no phone, being like, all right, this is my life now. <laughs> it's, it's, are there certain words then, so that you know on a daily basis? Almost no, it no. changes on a daily basis. I generally know anything which is like a proper noun, so you, you know, like, so like my own name. Uh, so yeah. my own name is often a problem, uh -huh. which is hard because, you know, like I can't change my name. I yeah. can't say something else that <laughs> means the same thing. So, you know, like a lot of people are kind of like, no, that guy's name is Steve. It's definitely Steve. <laughs> I met him before. He told me it was Steve. <laughs> the, the show you were, you did 62 shows at the Edinburgh Fringe. Yes. I know wow. the new show. I know what you did last summer. You brought it now to the Dublin Fringe. You yes. must be absolutely knackered. How's the show going? The show's going great. I, it's, I mean, I've been getting great responses. I love, you know, like I've had like a lot of stammers and speech therapists in, which is great because they are. The show is for everyone, but I always like love when there's somebody else uh, who's a stammer. And so that the show's going really well. I'm very happy with the show, but it's almost over and I'm going to have the biggest sleep of my life. Thank you. I, I, you. Listen, you absolutely deserve it. You are, of course, you're playing at the Dublin Fringe until Saturday. If people want to get tickets, it's fringefest.com and Ed Green, the Cavan man. <laughs> <laughs> that was great laugh. Yeah, so listen, go, the boobs. <laughs> Can you imagine that as a 12 year old? No, I can't. Terrifying. Love it. it was great. Aiden, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thanks so much. It was great. <laughs>